what about fidelity guarantee life whole whole life insurance hey i, I don't know um my education stops after the four major mutual life insurance companies um Mass Mutual Guardian, New York Life, Northwestern Mutual. My education stops after that. Um, I know that every whole life insurance agent, all the players I mentioned, they all agree to go with a mutual life insurance company, not a stock life insurance company. They all agree to go with a mutual. So I know I have put some notes here. Most if not all players that I mentioned above agree to be with a mutual life insurance company over a stock life insurance company. And they say you want to be with a company that's over a hundred years old because it'll show financial strength, performance, uh, you know, longevity. If you go with a stock company, you have to understand when they make profits, they have to pay the shareholders first, then they pay their bills and expenses, then they pay you the policy holder. But when you go with a mutual life insurance company, they are paying you first because you are an owner of that insurance company. You're an owner. And that's why they pay you a dividend. So that's what I would say to that. Charles says, what about Guardian? I own Guardian. Thank you for the information. Love it. Oh, yeah. Money multiplier. Cash flow tactics. Love it. When it comes to IBC, what's the difference between whole life and universal? So with index universal life insurance, money goes to premiums, cash value, and then it also goes to um, additional fees where your money grows in an index account in the stock market. Now, the, the issue is regarding net internal rates of returns. There is a higher chance of creating a mech. So remember how I said the number one goal of designing any permanent life insurance policy is to not create a mech. Say for example, um, you're putting in 70 grand a year into an IUL. I'm putting in 70 grand into a whole life and I have a 50-50 split. So it's a terrible design, right? And I don't know it. It's a terrible design, but it'll never mech out versus the person that has a 70K design and it's like an 80-20 split and it mechs out when the person is 75 years old. That is detrimental to that person's finances if they mech out. Versus me, had a 50-50 split, right? Terrible design, but I never create a mech. My money grows guaranteed consistently, although not as fast as it could have been, but still it's growing. And it's tax-free, stays tax-free, never mechs out, I can use the money forever and not have to worry. With IULs, they have historically, they have a track record of mecking out, which makes it a dangerous product. So I'm going to give you a personal experience, personal experience. Denzel went undercover, okay? I joined World Financial Group, WFG, because I want to see their infrastructure. That's how I am. I ask questions, but it's so hard to ask questions in the financial world when you're dealing with lots of commissions, lots of money payouts. A lot of people don't want to reveal the information. Okay. So me personally, I got a policy designed through WFG using Pacific Life, which is an IUL driven, I would say, company. They do whole life as well, but primarily they sell in IUL policies. Okay. I had them do a match for match on my own policy. And I saw the premiums were much higher. The mech limit was roughly the same as mine. There were tons of costs involved in it. And I have a video where I broke this down inside my master class for my clients. Um, so you know, you guys can view that. I was going to post it later on once I've edited, got more information. But through my own personal experience, when I when I seen the the IUL performance, it illustrates a better performance than whole life. And it should, 
because it's saying that it'll earn 15% returns, 25% returns. But the problem is that the illustration is based on those rates of returns. If there are multiple years where I do not get those rates of returns, I run the risk, I increase the chance of becoming a mech in the later years. The other thing you have to understand is when you're funding an IUL policy, the cost of an IUL does increase over time. This is a fact. It does increase over time because they have term rider fees and they have annual fees. There's a difference between a flat fee and an annual fee. So IUL charges roughly, I'd say between one and 2% maybe in annual fees. I think with Pacific Life, it was like one. And 1% 1 on a 1,000 is X. 1% 1 annual on 5,000 is higher than the 1,000. Would you agree? So the more money that goes into that IUL, the higher my internal cost goes, right? That puts a hinder on my cash value, number one, but it also puts my policy at risk of becoming a mech. And like I said, the number one goal is to not create a mech. So even if the policy performs great, which I'm sure IUL policies do perform great, what I've seen in WFG personally from a higher up in the company is what, what they do is they'll convince you to do a 1035 exchange into a new policy to avoid that mech. Well, why would I do that? Why would I convert my policy into a new policy to avoid a mech, right? Like that doesn't, uh, I'm gonna get a, little, get a little scared there because if I do that, I restart the cost of that new policy. You have to understand that the beginning of any permanent life insurance policy, you have these initial costs in the beginning of any permanent life insurance policy, whole life and IUL. Once we break past the beginning years, the policy becomes cheaper, less expensive. You get past all those beginning costs because the insurance company is overcharging us for life insurance in the beginning years. So if I keep doing 1035 exchanges into a new policy, I'm restarting those beginning years. So from a longevity perspective, IUL becomes a little scary to me, although I'm considering starting an IUL policy, putting in a very small amount, like six grand, just to see the track record. Will that stand the test of time without doing a 1035 exchange? If I, if I am encouraged by my agent to do a 1035 exchange, I'll know that it's because that that policy can in fact become a mech at age 89, right? Or 85 or 70. It may not become a mech anytime now, but if you come as a mech later on when I actually need it, that's not sweet. The other thing I've noticed in the WFG philosophy is they teach people how to put 10% of their income into these IUL policies. So you're saving 10%, got it. And then they show you how to take out withdrawals. Now that blows my mind. Why would I take out a withdrawal? It's kind of like withdrawing from your 401k. If you pull money out of your 401k, you're no longer earning interest, rates of return in that 401k. In a life insurance policy, when I take out a loan, it does not affect my cash value performance. But if I take out a withdrawal, so if I have 70K in cash value, I take out a withdrawal of 30K, I'm no longer earning interest on that money. Why are they telling me to do that? That is alarming to me. Why are they telling me to withdraw cash as a means of a stream of income? That doesn't seem too hot to me. If I do that, understand I'm forfeiting a higher death benefit performance because the cash value is no longer earning. So if it's no longer earning, that means my death benefit is no longer increasing. So I may end up with a lower death benefit. I don't like that philosophy. 
It doesn't match with my kingdom perpetuation plan. It may match for others, but for me personally, it doesn't match with my kingdom philosophy. So I don't, I don't enjoy that. Oh, I forgot to add, yes, sacred account. So that's another terminology. That's another player, friend of mine. I can't believe I'm, I forgot him. So let me put him on the list. Can't believe I forgot him. Sorry, Jerry. My fault. I'll put you higher up. So we got wealth, dynamics, and they call it the sacred account. Pretty cool. They call it the sacred account. And I've done business with them as well. I'm a client with Wealth Dynamics. I like their I like their their mentality. This is very interesting that we need a third party to build the plan. You do. Um, what if the policy is not right is not the right fit and you need to cancel it? You have a 14 day or maybe 30 day uh, what's called a look free provision. So you could cancel the policy at any time after initially funding it uh, within like the first 14 days. It's called the free look period, okay? Now, Amanda, to be clear, a third party, we're not, so like if I call State Farm directly and you say you want a whole life insurance policy, they're going to put you in contact with a licensed insurance agent, okay? that is brokered, that has an appointment, that is appointed, I mean, that's appointed with State Farm. So it's not a third party. It's not like I'm going to uh, you know, a separate broker that does business with State Farm. No, you could go that route. The problem is that agent is not going to have the education around how to design a particular policy. So I hope I was clear on that. So you have what's called life insurance companies. In a life insurance company, they have departments, okay? One of these departments are called agencies, right? State Farm has a dedicated agency where the agents that are in that agency only sell State Farm life insurance policies. They are what's called captive agents. They only sell State Farm. Then you have other agencies like the people I named on the list that are called non-captive agents, meaning they can do business with State Farm, with Geico, with Mass Mutual, with Fidelity, with Mutual of Omaha, with Mutual Trust, with Guardian, with New York Life, with MetLife. They, have an, they are appointed with all of the different carriers, say 30, 40, 50 plus carriers all around the United States. That doesn't make them a third party. That just gives them the ability to sell multiple policies to different people because different people want different things. There's no person on planet Earth that has a copy of themselves. So I'm different from you, Amanda Parker, right? Your name is Amanda Parker, my name is Denzel Rodriguez. So we have different personalities, different like, this is what makes us unique. So if there was only one company, it kind of makes us like, it, it limits our options. And I like to have options, right? When I'm, when I'm doing my finances, okay? Hopefully that's clear, very, very clear. Andres says, once you take out a loan, do you have to pay that back with premium? Um, no, your premium is separate from your loan, okay? Premium is separate from the loan. Uh, you have a choice whether to pay that back um, early, later. You could never pay it back if you don't want to. All right, what I want to do real quick, I just want to test this out. I can't believe it's, we're two hours in. 86 people in the house. You, you guys are just really committed to getting the information. I love it. I really do. Modeling. My insurance agent tried to tell me that only businesses use this type of plan, but I know better. They are very convincing. It has me second guessing what I know. Yeah. Um, 
here's where my knowledge stops in regards to how businesses use these types of policies, right? So there's something called private placement life insurance. This is something that I learned, private, private placement life insurance. I learned this word from Tony Robbins. He has a book called Money Master the Game. It's the size of the Bible, right? It's very deep. It's like 700 pages long. It's no joke. All about money. And towards the end of the book, he talks about private placement life insurance. So what businesses do is they, you know, a business will establish their own life insurance company pay the premiums and get a write-off. Now, the individual has to have a net worth of, I would say, five million or, or higher. And you have, to, you have to have, I think, at least one million of revenue per year to start this kind of an account right so obviously if, if if a business were to do this they get write-offs on the premiums another term for this concept is called key man insurance bank owned life insurance corporate owned life insurance okay these guys get to do what your average Joe cannot because average Joe does not have that kind of wealth, right? So in the meantime, you can create a personal life insurance policy, not a business um, developed policy, right? You start in the personal side, and then should you decide to 10X your income, then maybe you wanna look into this realm of private placement life insurance, corporate owned, key man insurance, bank owned, life insurance product that may be something that you might want to look into but until then I don't know how many people are gonna make that kind of money okay the average Joe does not have the knowledge to make that kind of money even if you do make that money and when you do they when you do make that money I promise you you're gonna come across individuals that are gonna talk about that so I mean once you get to that level there's certain information that just comes comes quick there's there's no issue okay dividend that you earn do you have to pay taxes no you do not you do not pay taxes inside the policy if it's designed correctly if you create a mech yes you will have to pay taxes and penalties okay let's see let's see uh Sharonda, how long do you have to pay into the policy before you are allowed to borrow so when i funded my two policies i took out a loan within the first two weeks so you do have access to your money basically like day one of funding it. You set up your account, you download the apps that the company has. Mass Mutual and Guardian, they have an app. You have your online portal, you see your information. Once the money goes through, it recognizes, you can start the loan process. You call your agent and they can help you with the loan process. You can either do a direct deposit or you can take out, uh, have it a check sent to the mail, which takes longer. I don't recommend it. I'd rather do direct deposit right to my account. It takes like four days or less.